America. Just kidding. Come on, look at me, Joe. What are you guys really doing? You're really here for entrepreneurial creativity. Can you tell that I authorized the dean's request to expand the class by 25%? Yeah. So apparently we all can be able to see. Hopefully if I do a terrible job today, why don't you drop and then we'll open up some space, right? Okay. So here you are in entrepreneurial creativity. What are we going to do today? Are you welcome? We're going to answer some questions. What have you got yourself into? Where are we going? How are we going to get there? Who's that guy up there? It's me. A little bit about you guys, and then we'll leave early. Sound good? Yeah. Outstanding. All right, so what have you gotten into? This is entrepreneurial creativity. It's the core course on the LSA side for the entrepreneurship minors. It was created in 60 days, but it was in the industry and by me, and fostered the launch of the minor about three or four years ago, and it's been super awesome ever since. It's growing every term. This is the biggest we've ever done. I will probably lose my shit this term because there's so many of you, but you get to see some of your breakdown. It'll be awesome. Right? So, you're going to learn about creativity from a psychology perspective, because I'm an educational psychologist. You're going to learn about it from three different levels. We're going to talk about it first in a personal way. Then we're going to talk about team and team skills and creativity with teams. Then we're going to wrap up the course with a third phase. We're going to talk about leadership. And that's really the first three quarters of the course. And then the last quarter of the course is actually going to be you guys presenting a lot of your stuff. So the last portion of the course is actually you reporting out on this cool project that you're going to do for the whole term. We'll talk more about that. There's this epic project. You're going to learn some hopefully interesting stuff from a trying to be interesting dude. That would be me. And I'm a big on something called community of learners, which in the educational psychology world, it basically means we're all working together to do something cool. This isn't about me writing stuff down to you. It's about us working together. That's a bunch of something interesting, something that you can be proud of. So if everybody sort of has a stake. I really appreciate folks who get involved in lecture. I put a great I put great emphasis on involvement in the class, things like attendance on Friday discussion section, things like that. The more you put in this class, the more you get out of it. I had to make $50,000 on an idea in this class because eventually after I kicked in the ass the course for two weeks straight, I finally launched it. I made 50,000 bucks in one term. Now that's extreme. You should not expect to replicate those results. But people have done really cool stuff in this class, right? We all work together. I'll give you some other cool examples of some projects next time. So where are we going? We're going to look at creativity as a construct, because in a class of creativity, you should understand what creativity is. You should have a working definition of it. We'll work on that next time. Uh, some of its components. We're going to talk a little bit about the qualities of big C creative. So we're going to look at really creative people through history. And we're going to see, what do we know about them? What's common to across all of them? What's interesting about that? And how you sort of see yourself in relation to that, perhaps, right? You're going to learn a little bit about your own qualities. I've broken down a bunch of things that I think contribute both to creativity and success on teams. You're going to take a bunch of tests. You're going to write some papers about what those test results are. You're going to think about what kind of people and characteristics you have and who you want to surround yourself with for teams. You'll write some papers on that. Yep. Um, we're going to fill in some gaps in your learning, hopefully. All right. You're going to exercise your own creativity on a team. So you're going to put all these things in practice. All the things you're learning about teamwork, team dynamics, leadership, you're going to apply on a group of three, four, or with my permission, five people uh, to do something really cool. You have to think of this. You have to create, ideate, come up with this idea. It does not have to be a business, this thing that you do with your group. You can do social entrepreneurship something that has no profit potential, something that is purely artistic, that's perfectly fine. It just has to be creative, and the closer you are to epic, the more chance you have of scoring an A, right? So always be epic, right? Ideas, key points, follow all the questions. But this course is not, it's not a business course. If you want the business stuff, go take the S212, a bunch of other Eric's, all the guys who teach the, the core courses are named Eric, right? that's a rule, so. Um, <laughs> Requirement. If you can do that, depending, depending on what you're doing for your project with your group, you may get kind of businessy. Somebody was doing something like they wanted to design a new type of hotel for the Ann Arbor or something like that, and I made them have like, you know, a textual drawing and a business plan for that. But that was because they weren't obviously they were not going to actually build a freaking hotel, right? So you don't have to do a business plan in this course, right? This is not a startup out of your dog and pony. There are not very many. There's one guest lecturer usually, and it's going to be one of the GSIs telling you about some extra cool stuff that's in their expertise. I don't bring in a lot of people and parade them around. This is about us learning.
and stuff, and you guys are doing something cool. It's not a shark tank, we don't grill you repeatedly, but at the very end, you will present, so about half of you will end up presenting a lecture if you're strong. And the very best of those get cut off the top and pulled to a special session that I do where I bring a bunch of VCs and special mentors and other people together and have this thing called the big show that happens after the end of this class. And it's a chance for the very best teams to present one more time and get funding or networking or anything else that they need to get their business launched. So it's really cool. Um, there you go. Getting a little too far away. So, so all these things, right? Do not come at the end of the class and be like, well, I didn't learn, I didn't have enough guest lectures. Just come on. All right, some initial questions. Think about, do you guys get, get framed up here? What's your definition of creativity? Do you have one? Hopefully after the next lecture you will. Is creativity the same as entrepreneurship? Are they related, right? Is there an entrepreneurship gene or can anybody be an entrepreneur? Um, can creativity be taught? Can it be enhanced based on what you have? What characteristics does a typical founder or creative have or have to have? Or can you just assemble a really good team and then it doesn't matter? So we'll think about all these things in this course. Can groups be creative? And if so, what enables or enhances that? So they're all good stuff to think about. How are we gonna get there? So there's gonna be readings. I have a problem in this class in that I try to get these readings, I call them very specifically because they're interested in the really add your experience in the class. There's two things that bug me. There are people who just kind of start out in readings people who the teams were off last year. The way this course is structured, if you're a scammer, you can do both of those things and probably survive. But you're just screwing yourself over. So I really appreciate it if you can make time to do some minimal readings. I'm not the guy who gives you 500 pages a week or makes you read a book all the time, right? So do the readings because they contain the extra value that you get out of this class. Lectures, you should attend. Life is about showing up. I am not somebody who bombard you and lecture as fast as possible with more shit than you can possibly write down. I don't sit here and do high stakes midterms and finals where you're tortured and trying to get an A. And I'm like fucking sloth sitting on my gold with all my A's and I won't give them to you and I'll roast you up. Right? This is not how this class works. <laughs> if you work hard for me, I will. You deliver, I deliver, right? But life is about showing up. In the class, I tell a lot of stories, I explain things, I ask questions. And so if all you're doing is relying on your friend's notes, you're missing stuff. And it shows up when you write your papers. Because you'll say some ridiculous, weird crap in your papers about what a construct means. And the GSS will be like, hey, Dr. French, check it out. I found another one who never goes to lecture. Because you're clearly just writing the paper off somebody else's notes. So I really encourage you to attack. Plus, I've entertained yourself. All right. Canvas quizzes. Um, there are quizzes that are tied to the lecture content of the readings. So a quiz will be due before almost every lecture. That quiz will be about stuff you learned in the previous lecture and the readings for the upcoming lecture. That quiz will open up the day before lecture, and it will close right as lecture starts. So you'll have like an eight-hour, ten-hour window to do the twelve-hour window, maybe more, to do the quiz. And you should do that because what you don't want is to skip tons of the quizzes. Quizzes have point values. You'll get all nervous. Oh my gosh, I missed one out of three. I'm going to die. Relax. You just need to be about as good as everybody else on the quizzes because they funnel into participation. Right. So just. Trust me, and just the one thing you don't want to do is don't skip the quizzes, okay? We'll talk a little bit more about it in a second. We do eye-picker questions in class. Eye-picker questions are informational for me. And assessment, I'm going to say this one time, eye-picker does not affect your grade. It used to, but there was an eye-picker cheese handle. And so angry, took it out. So now, eye-picker is only used to assess whether you're here and I still check numbers, and I will still try anybody who cheats with eye clickers and puts in for their friends. Don't do it. But it doesn't affect your grade anymore. Your eye clicker data has to be good in order for you to get my attention for any break that you need. So if you want extra credit at the end, if you've got some special thing you need to do, if you need a favor from me, if your eye clicker data is good and you've been here and invested in the class, I will do anything it takes to help you out. But if your eye clicker data is crap, I'm not even going to return your email. Does that make sense? Be here, click it in your eye clicker. Don't click it in your buddy's eye clicker because I'll lose my shit. I've done it before. It's really ugly. Don't, no cheating. I don't like that stuff. All right? Um, it's going to be a group project and group work. That's one of the most awesome things about this class. It's a lot of fun. You get mentored a lot. Um, we're going to do something crazy and just mix people up and you're going to get scattered all off the discussion sections. This class is some weird shit. Like nothing you've ever taken before. But you're going to love it. Trust me. Right? You're going to write a couple of reaction papers and then you're going to make an end of term team presentation. The team presentation is five slides, five minutes, no more. So you've got to be really tight on this presentation. 
The reaction papers. You get three opportunities to do a reaction paper. You have to do two. Okay? So if you skip the first one, what can you not do with the second one? See, that, that doesn't seem hard to me, even if you're not a math major. But last term was the first term in the history of the class that we actually had no student exercise the skip one, skip two option, which is very bad, right? You have to do two. I would say the correlation of students having problems with the course correlates very highly with skipping paper one. I do not recommend skipping paper one. Take that for what it's worth. Awesome, how are we get there? Class start on time, end early, I'm big for that. Lectures, make the most of them, like I said. I'm up here slinging it every day, entertaining. I got little mini lectures with all kinds of cool life skills where I press you and poke you about the annoying bullshit in your head and I make you think about things differently and you get really frustrated with me. It's awesome, right? Trust me, you'll love it. Uh, syllabus is gonna go live on Canvas shortly. Look that over, there's a couple of things I want you to read. There's a project guide you should read multiple times. There's a syllabus, a syllabus extension that's full of all kinds of helpful things about how you should communicate with me and do emails. There's funny stories in there about the worst students I've ever had, the crazy shit that they did. It's really fun reading, so you should check that out. Good stuff. Um, how are you graded? Here it is. 30% participation. Friday section is mandatory. This is not like some other classes where it's law, whatever. This Friday section, I jerked this whole class concept around and fought with the administration to get this system with the GSIs so that you would have dedicated team meeting time every Friday. You must go. If you skip and are unexcused on Friday, it is the quickest way to kill your participation grade. Plan on going to every Friday section. You have to, that's when your team meets, at a minimum then, should be in addition to that, right? 40% uh, of your action papers, so two of them at 20 points each, 30% of the project, all right? Can we tighten up grading a little bit this term? I used to basically say, look, if you turn in something that hit most of the points, I give you full points for your group. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give about A minus points if you hit the basics, right? So you're only going to get full points if you really do it a little extra. So don't, so if you're one of those folks just going to kind of squeak by, do like, it's just three pages, so if you do two and three quarters pages, right? If it says, Polar has to have five things, you have exactly five things and no more, right? It's just text, there's no graphics, nothing, right? Then you probably get like, you know, 2.5 or you know, 2.8 out of three, but not three, right? So you've got to up your game a little bit. You're great, here it is again, graphically, right? Picture what does work. I clicker operates over here, outside of grading. It just determines whether you get extra credit eligibility or any breaks, right? Quizzes and Friday attendance, those two things together drive your participation. Everybody starts with perfect score for participation, and they take off points to the degree you are noticeably lagging the pattern. So if the average quiz score is about 70%, the average number of quizzes missed is three, and you've missed five quizzes, your score is 50, you're gonna lose works. You don't want to be behind the pack. Keep up with the pack. Just do quizzes. Right? Show up to the quizzes. Show up on Fridays. This is simple stuff. This is stuff we do in like sixth grade, right? Papers. Do two. You can do three. If you do one, two, and three, you can drop the lowest one. So if you do the first one, I recommend it. If you get 16, ooh, that's a B. Because we all know B's all in that. <laughs> so, so you don't like your B, so you talk to the GSI. Kiss up a little bit, then you bring some cookies, right? And then, you know, your grade goes up on the next one, see? So then you can do the two and three, and you can drop the first one. Um, and then the project is a whole bunch of checkpoints, right? There's phases one, two, three, four. Some people say, these are repetitive. Look, I had to put these phases in there because it seems to screw around. And you sit there and screw around for three months straight, doing nothing, and then try and load up a whole bunch of last week's bullshit, and I can't stand it. I'm very confused. It's a waste of my time. So you have to do these phases. They're a little repetitive, but look. Just do phase one, do what it says. Then when you do phase two, you just add to phase one and turn into phase two. But the phase one stuff still is fun. And then you gotta do phase three, so you just take phase two, add more shit, and then turn it in. It's not that hard. Just follow the, the project guide that says everything that you need to do. Just do that, it'll be great, okay? So that's how you get those answers. Questions I'm grading? <laughs> pretty good, okay? Rocking and rolling. All right, now, you learn a little about me? You know you have like uh, that crazy uncle that always makes you watch slideshows, right? That's what's coming. All right, so no deficiencies. <laughs> Failed attempts at humor data references. I'm always trying to be funny. Sometimes I miss. If I ever say something here that really makes you angry, please come tell me that you're angry. Because chances are I was trying to be funny and just missed the mark, or you misunderstood me or something. I'm never ever trying to be mean or anybody's feelings or be a jerk, right? I make dated references like Bueller, 
Do it? Okay, see, when I don't get a single laugh, this is damn quick. Thank you for those who laughed, appreciate it. Um, I get a little excited, as you can tell. I speak quickly, because I get excited about stuff, that's fine, you can always have to slow down. 10 letter words, but it have to be me a long time to see, I have a lot of degrees. Sometimes I use a big theory thing, big theory term, that doesn't make sense to you, raise your hand, explain it better. Five letter words, I was in the Navy for 20 years. You can take the sailor in the Navy, but you can't take it as a sailor. I think I probably already dropped that bomb like six times, I'm sorry, this is just my nature. So, from what I understand, I can't be fired, so which is good, I do a lot. Um, soft sexism is mostly not a problem for me, but I was raised in the 60s, right? when every textbook had nothing but dudes in it for every single thing, right? So I'm reasonably and reasonably aware, but like, you know, five years ago, one of my GSI said, you know, every single example you get is with guys. There's never any women examples. So if I'm doing something like that, please give me feedback about the deal, right? Awesome. Uh, like, really not an issue, but whatever. I can be really painfully blunt and direct. If I tell you, don't mess with me, read the syllabus, and then you come and you send me an email about something to the syllabus, I'm just going to send an email back saying, read the syllabus, that's it. I might not even answer the email, right? So in class, I might do the same thing. I can be really blunt and direct. I'm never trying to be mean, right? But please, just, as we'll talk about here in a second, be sensitive about time. All right, I'm holding you to a high standard. I got a low, tol I got a low tolerance for nonsense and immaturity. Here's the problem. I sat where you sit for many years, a long time. You're about to find out how long. And when I was here the first time as an undergraduate, I was a jackass, right? I did not study hard, I was unmotivated, I was a turd. And I hate thinking back on the kind of student I was. If, 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 if 1987 me was in this class, I would punch myself in the face. I'm so disappointed with the student I was back then. So where you guys will get in trouble is when your behavior triggers in me the memories and the self-loathing I have for myself at that age, that's where you're gonna get cranky, Dr. Fretz. So just don't do that. No shenanigans, no grade grubbing, right? None of that, right? Please. Um, awesome. And I'm very sensitive about the use of time. This time is a big deal for me, and I'm about to show you why, right? So here you go, right? This is my little This is grade grubbing here. Yeah, just give me one more bit. This is the face you can get right here. <laughs> All right? So, awesome. I got your feedback. So here's an example. Which class would you want? This is how interesting classes can be. Take a look. See if you can form an opinion. You want the class on the left or the class on the right? Um, Jeffrey P. Who's got an opinion? Got an opinion yet? Who's got an opinion? Which class you want? Anybody? Left, right? What do you think? Who's right? Left. Well, that's good. I like that. But what's the joke here? Same day class. It's one of my four day lectures. A lot like so Here's the deal. Every one of these is a unique student. This is three people in a 300 person lecture who were just pissed at, I don't know what's wrong with you. So these people were in the same class side by side for four months. And not one of them ever came and said anything to me. Now, I don't know who these people are because they never come to me during the class. They just say this bullshit in the final evaluations, which I stopped doing, by the way. <laughs> so, so if you feel like you need to write some crap like this, you better come write it on my garage and spray paint. <laughs> but seriously, whatever it is that makes you want to write like this, when I work as hard as I do, all I can say is my door is always open. There is something about this class you don't like. I am legendary for doing anything to help my students. So if you come to me, you can be earnestly, we can fix almost any problem. But if you wait, finally write some crap like this, well, now at this point, no one's going to know. So, all right. This is what the lecture looks like, right? You get this breakdown. Over here, you get this tiny 2%. They're gross, right? They're angry. It seems personal. They're disengaged. I don't know whether they just resent me pushing them. I don't know what the deal is with these students. If it's one of you, I'd really appreciate it. I tell you, I don't like you, but let's do lunch. I will literally take you to lunch. If something for this class or me that's pissing you off, I'd love to understand the dynamic because I don't understand this 2% that sits down here in a class like this and gets pissed. And there's the chumps. That's like 10%. They're kind of passive. They skip a lot of lectures. They're kind of scammy, right? They're kind of like, what's a little like to do? Let me get away with this, right? Um, they get screen locked, meaning they're constantly in the Facebook, right? And a whole bunch of research. I post some of it for you show that it doesn't work at all. Just having your Facebook open while you're in lecture is multitasking. Not only are you lowering your own retention of scores, you're screwing up the scores of the people on your side. So if you're multitasking, 
It's just a terrible idea. The research is absolutely incredible. It's not in sight class, so that's not happening for various reasons. All right, and then you got the chairs. There's a real, real big pile up in this class, right? A lot of people really, they're driven, they're honest, they're engaged, low BS, they got some clear goals of what they want to do. That's where I'm hoping all you guys will end up. Sound good? Awesome. All right. So which group is the guy? Ass kickers, ass firers, and assholes. <laughs> the whole range. And I'm telling you, I get these students every time. So you just decide where you are on this. You know what I'm asking is you're fast out of the gate. You know why you're here. You form your group. You, you attend lectures. You attend on Friday. You register your eye picker early. You drink all the Kool-Aid that Dr. Brett serves. You read the in manual, right, particularly the project guide. You're mindful of your hours, meaning that you know that to be a successful group, you've got to be putting in three to four hours per person per week on your project. In this class, the teams that blow up are the ones that blow this off. The ones that go, like, yay, September, or yay, January, right, that's right, woo, -hoo, right? That's awesome, because you're like, oh, it's not your April, go for it. Okay? But you gotta put in the time, because at the end, I'm gonna ask you, where are your 200 hours? Right? There's so many really uncomfortable conversations. So you just had one, just, just had one with Maggie in the group just about two weeks ago. Just sat around the table and I said, guys, there's four of them, right? That's 200 hours of work. List for me all the things you have done. And they listed out these five or six things and I said, two hours, three hours, maybe four hours. They came up with maybe 20 hours from 200. And I said, see? And they, it was horribly awkward, right? And they had no answer, right? They wish they had those hours back. They did. So they lost a lot of points. Don't do that. Um, you ought to want to be epic. You got to work through the phases. You got to respect your event, the class me. Don't play games. If you see a wall, you either destroy it, climb it, or come ask for my help, and I'll help you do either of those. You got to be assertive, asking for help. You got to be a poem Jedi and a teacher or a poem. Use the poem correctly. You're going to really run your team well, right? Because it's described really clearly in the project guide. Um, so just learn how to do this thing. The, the bad poem use is you, you make it up in reverse. So teams that don't do this right, they do a bunch of stuff on their own way, and they go back and try to create a poem. It's always really obvious when you do this. You put a lot of weird stuff in there that doesn't make sense. So you'll see how to do this. Just do it correctly. And please respect my GSIs. Every once in a while I get people who are like, oh, I don't have to respect them or GSI. Or I don't have to respect her. She's more. That doesn't play with me. My GSIs are me. My GSIs tell me everything that goes on in the section. So you will get the frets down on you. If you're out of control in the section, if you're blowing in 20 minutes late, you're like, yeah, what's up? You know? And then when they give you a hard time about it, you're like, don't be such a bitch. No, no, no. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. If you're talking to them, it's like you're talking to me, okay? Um, be an aspirer, right? So this is pretty good. You do most of this, but you're a little weaker. Sometimes you skip paper one, and drink some of the Kool Aid. Some of these teams, you can't turn the corner on team dynamics, you can't quite get it, right? Um, if you hit the wall, then you stop and you're like, oh, it's such a big wall. What can we do? I don't know. We're so depressed because it's such a big wall. What you? I don't know. What should we do? What should we, let's have a meeting and talk about the wall. No, in this class, you really got to get after it, right? So if you hit a wall, if you're ever having trouble, you immediately send up a flare to your GSI or me. I got a big Rolodex. I know people all over the university. Just came from a meeting with one of the regents talking about cool futuristic stuff. I know a lot of people. I'll totally be able to help you out, but you got to speak up. Don't wait till the end. Um, and you got to want it, right? Um, also, sometimes these inspires you get some bad breaks. We've had some teams really take some nut shots over the years, right? Like, uh, that's too graphic, all right? So, <laughs> so they, they had solo cups, they wanted to put advertising on solo cups. It was a great idea, and they would put advertising on solo cups. You know how much time I spend on solo cups? So they were going to get the cups, put the advertising, like Bell Pizza and Uber on there, right? They would, the advertisers would pay money for them, they would lower the cost of the cups. The fraternities and the big places doing parties would be really low cost cups. It's a big adventure. And then lastly, these are the people I don't like, right? They're entitled. The people who are like, oh yeah, I missed the Friday meeting. But I had a very important internship. There it is. That Friday in New York. And I don't think the university mission will never want to be putting a student like me in a position to have to choose between a future employer. Oh my gosh, shut up. Look, you took you go, go do your thing on Saturday, right? And you register for that class on Friday and come to the class on Friday. Right? 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 Right?
You see what I mean? Like, don't do this whole entitled thing where hundreds oh, come, right? You got to be these people over here. They don't read the documents. They don't do the readings. They skip lecture. And feel clever. They come and they demand a regrade. I had a, I had a student get a B plus on a paper. He said it was the first B plus he'd ever gotten. It was very not good. The whole introduction was crap, and it took up the whole first page. And, and the GSI took up a point, a half point. And, and this was just absolutely out of their mind that anybody would ever consider anything they wrote anything less than perfect. It was the most insane conversation I've ever had. First, I wanted to argue for like days, right? You, I don't know what the deal is, right? We're not going to regrade, right? Um, if you really feel your GSI is treated you poorly, I will get involved. I will. I do offer that option of regrading a paper if you really think the GSI hosed you, but be careful because I'm a pretty hard grader and I train them, right? Um, don't disrespect GSIs. Don't give just kindness with weakness. I'm a really kind guy, but I'm not weak. So when I try to be really nice, I try to bias the course in your favor. I always try to make pro student decisions all the time. But that doesn't mean that I'm a cat's or a moron. I spent 20 years in the military, right? So I have a low tolerance for nonsense. So please don't confuse kindness with weakness. It always happens towards the end of the class and it makes everybody uncomfortable. Um, don't skip Friday section. Don't pivot without permission. If your group is going to make a dragon, that, that lays golden eggs and drops them in a diet, don't suddenly pivot to um, making a man a ton of people for the army or something, right? You have to tell me when you change your group's topic, right? Um, what else? Don't skip paper one. Don't miss deadlines. Definitely don't lie and cheat. We have people lying about grandma's funerals. GSI is a smart man, you're grad students, right? So if you cheat, if you're cutting corners in that, you're telling stories, and you're, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're talking like about grandma's funeral at a certain place, they're going to call that place. When that place had no funerals, I had to send them to the dean. It's super awkward, right? Same thing with the eye picker cheating. We can take the numbers. Taylor's going to handle the tech for the eye picker. He's not dumb. He can count. If we get 192 eye pickers <coughs> and there's 180 people in the room, we have a problem. I'm going to stand by the doors. I'm going to film everybody going out. We're going to resolve it line by line. And we're going to send all the names that aren't here to the dean. So just don't do this stuff with the eye picker with me, right? Don't plagiarize. Have people stealing stuff. You guys know plagiarism, right? If you have any question about academic dishonesty, don't worry, Dr. Fred's got you covered. I made a whole little booklet for it. It's on the Canvas site. You should read it. I'm surprised that a lot of students don't really understand what academic dishonesty is. It's Google generation thing. You gotta be careful. Because academic honesty and being careful about citing where you got your stuff, that is a core value, a core cardinal sin for academia, which is where you are now. So you really need to be smart about this. So it's another thing I recommend you read. Questions like this. You guys want to be over here? Be these people, all right? It's a class for adults, right? It's a class for adults. And I was trying to say something here, but I can't remember what that was another story. Oh, well. <laughs> Alzheimer's, it happens, right? Class for adults, be an adult. All right. So who is Dr. Rex, right? A lecturer, a faculty, but I'm not tenure track. I'm kind of a unicorn. I teach all over the place. College of Engineering, School of Education, LSA, Psychology, all over. Don't have an office. No matter when they try to give me an office, I won't take it. Why? So, I don't have a research agenda, I don't have a lab, I don't have any administrative support, it's just me and my GSI team. My sole purpose is to teach, and to teach really well. I'm old, I'm retired from the Navy, I have no interest in any nonsense, I come from and live in the real world, and I am going to be throwing the real world in your face with regularity. Some of you are going to find something comfortable, I do not care. Because you are Wolverines, so you are going to go out and kick ass in the world as Wolverine, and I want you to be ready, right? The real world is coming for you. But I'm also a really good mentor. There's all kinds of stuff that people, all kinds of stuff that I thought I should know or should have known when I was younger. I'm going to go out of my way to give you this information in this class, right? If you engage me, you'll get a lot back out of it, right? So I have enough degrees to start my own heat wave. I actually graduated from here in 89. I have two bachelors, two masters, and a dual PhD in psychology and education. So I have been in college or in graduate studies longer than almost every single one of you has been alive. There is no bullshit you can try with me that I have not already tried on somebody else's name. Right? <laughs> Let's just be cool, right? 10,000 hours of teaching, facilitating, instructing, running schoolhouses, researching, so hopefully I'm pretty good at this. If this isn't the best class you've had, at least hopefully it doesn't suck, right? Um, some other stuff, I do a lot of volunteer work in the local community, hugely involved with veterans. You'll hear a little bit more about that later. Um, and you're only, and this is my phrase, you're only young once, but you can be mature forever. That's me. All right, so I like being mature. All right. And a true blue. How is you? So now it's time for the slideshow. All right, crazy uncle time. That's me, suck on my phone. My sister Lori. Here I am. This is us. My dad loved to travel since us in Paris, France. 
front of a little shop, right? Oh, he's a Cub Scout. You know, and that's the Cub Scout, he's a Boy Scout. Oh, he's an Eagle Scout. Oh. Any Eagle Scouts in here? All right, all right. Oh, man. Okay, yeah, well, wait, and that's, uh, whoop, let's go back. Yeah, that's me, Penny Rock. You see, I'm twice the man I used to be. Uh, this is my, uh, my buddy Chuck. So, yeah, so I'm not bad. I'll use joke. <laughs> this is me. And so we're painting this. Did you know this, we're painting an M on here? Did you know there used to be McDonald's on campus? You know where the bubble tea joint is right next to the blue left on, uh, on the top of you? If you look behind their edge curtain, everything is blue and yellow and still has McDonald's stuff back there in the tile. So I was the McBouncer, right? Because I was pretty tall, I was in much better shape, so I would literally stand there, all the drunks would come from Charlie's and Rick's, right? And so I would stand there and keep them, they'd set fire to things and steal, yeah, you know, steal, uh, steal the trash cans, it was a zoo seat. Good times! <laughs> what else? So I met this poor lady, this East Quad, right? She'll show up again. That's me pretending to work in the Navy. I said, oh, you want to be a pilot? I tried that. I said, no, I kind of got sick, right? Said, oh, you want to be a submarine? The submarine's full of weirdos like this guy. Said, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm going to drive ships. So that's what I did for my career. I drove ships. A ship driver, service warfare officer. This is me in Gulf War I. Uh, we're right now, we're right alongside a, a 60,000 ton oiler. So this is kind of like driving a car next to an oil tanker uh, on a big rig on the highway, about one foot apart at 60 miles an hour while fueling your car. It's very exciting, actually. Quite dramatic, right? Um, I got deployed a couple times, this is uh, at Christmas, I didn't get to see my family, but I got to sit on a camel. Um, I got to deploy to Iraq, that was super fun, except we were shooting at you and you had to be in our vehicles all the time, which kind of sucked. But when you got back to really nasty convoys, sometimes, so you're visiting one of Saddam's old palaces that we took over, they would have the morale, welfare, and wreck team, and the Oscar cheerleaders would be there, and you would sit there all sweating and smelly and get a picture with the Oscar cheerleaders. I said this home to my wife, I was like, oh, it's tough over here. It's tough, it's brutal, right? So, good times. I also started a scout troop over there in Baghdad, which you'll hear more about in the leadership section. Definitely one of the cooler things I've ever done. Um, and these were the, uh, these were the, the scouts back then. This was, what, 2008? So about almost 10 years ago now. Awesome. So, that's my family again. That's me. <laughs> if it was Halloween, I would always come in and dress up as a, a, in some kind of costume, right? These are my children. Uh, they're all teenagers now, but teenagers are both ugly and surly. So, I use this picture to remind me. Less than it used to be, right? Uh, this one's only 13, so she kind of still loves me, but these two know. Uh, uh, that's my dad. He was a psychologist in the University of Maryland. He passed away some years ago, but he got to see me get my PhD. That's me uh, teaching some scouts how to do sailing. Let's go down to the Caribbean. I do a high adventure stuff with some senior scouts. It's called uh, venturing. Pretty cool. Uh, I have to teach them how to survive in the outdoors. Uh, so we're out to teach them to do an Arctic survival, making them build snow caves and stuff. And uh, then I do a bunch of stuff with vets. So this is me at a 14,000 foot peak um, that we've summited out in Colorado with a bunch of vets, right? Awesome. So that's a little bit about me. Sound good? All right, we're moving along. So now I want you to know why I'm here. And this is an important point. I don't think you guys necessarily understand this, right? I'm here to set you on fire, do every shit that you owe them, and I'm out of owe them, right? So we gotta do good stuff in here. Now here's my question. What does my work bring to the university? How much, when I work for a term, how much do you think the university brings in? from your parents, from your student loans. It's a lot. It's over a million bucks. This class alone is a million bucks. All right? How much do they pay me? Teach this class. Somebody guess. So I want you to understand something. I put in about 300 hours in this class, and I bill out at $100 an hour for the stuff that I do when I fly around, and the people pay me to run my mouth, believe it or not, right? And so, even at $30,000, that would still only be 3%. This is what I'm here for, but that's not what I'm here for. What am I here for? Huh? I'm here to teach this class because of what you do. That's it. I'm not here for the money, right? So let's just be clear about that, right? Okay, just think about it, does that mean something? I want you to do epic shit, right? This is the goal. This is the goal with your project, is to do something awesome, right? What does it look like, right? We talked about all this, oh, we put it on the right? Yeah, so 20 years in the Navy, right? So this is me, this is a younger, cooler version of me. This is more epic stuff, let me back up one more time. So that's, I got decided. So that's me, before, that's when I retired, right? So I was much cooler and younger back then, right? And I have an implausibly attractive personal physician, that would be my wife, right? The woman that you saw in that earlier photo, right? And she's been with me 30 years, 
She still looks like she's 29 years old. I think she's the most epic thing in my life, right? We got what else? A non-trivial house. I have a very large house, and I have a deck there. You know what that is? I'm going to show you. All right? So this is the house that we built, right? Yeah. And the best part is you guys can come out and have your team meetings on the deck before you decide it's pretty freezing at this house. But we're looking at totally awesome. So teams are totally welcome to come out there. It's just right on the edge of town. There's the death ramp. I'm on a really steep hillside. It's like 45 degrees. So I carved this ditch, and then I put things in there, and I made a water slide which shoots down to 45 degrees and hits a ramp and chucks you onto the river. This has been used three times. It's been used three times, and somebody died, almost died, each time. And now nobody will get too epic, I think. But we're adjusting I like epic stuff, right? Other epic things, did the Boy Scout troop and camp on the Iraqi Special Forces base in Baghdad, that's awesome, right? I'm a Dudist minister, so if you need to get married, I'm your guy, it's me, marrying somebody in my backyard. <laughs> uh, I do industrial scale partying, it's a little bit scary, so this is my last Halloween party, got a little out of hand, this is an actual photo of a bunch of insurance company in my backyard. <laughs> Uh, I have actually been kicked out of Patton Marsh in Ann Arbor, and I'm permanently banned for one. So, <laughs> if you do see me, does anybody see Steve last night? Steve last night, show of hands. That's not, not many, you're going to be slapping. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah, okay. So, if you see me at Steve's or Rick's, I do it maybe once a term, right? Yeah, it's going to be kind of cool because it gets out of hand, and like, the university kind of hears about it, and they're like, yeah, come down. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, and my daughter's woman, my daughter came here. She was, uh, she was uh, identified pretty early as kind of an interesting thing to kids. So she got here um, at age 16 as a freshman with two associates who he's already done. And she's about to graduate and go to U of Medical School. So that's a little epic thing. My daughter is amazing. You might see her around in classes. You do definitely embarrass her, right? All right. So questions on epicness. <coughs> I like epicness. What do I want you to do? I want you to be cool. I want you to do epic shit while on fire. Pretty simple, right? What does it mean? What does epic shit look like? I want you to do stuff, and I'll help you with this. Like, it's routine in this class. So we get calls from the Department of Public Security, from the Air Police, from the Dean's Office, from other agencies, because my teams are out there doing interesting stuff, right? So like, you should not be fearful. I don't want you to actually set fire to things, right? But I'm just saying, we go out there and do epic stuff sometimes. You, we have some adventures, right? Uh, we have Mate Bros. You may know these guys. It's, a, it's an energy tea company with Sam Nikolak, who's a gymnast. Uh, AOE Medical is a company that made this really cool chair, turns into a bed. It's in hospitals. This is an actual ongoing company now. They you guys, all these launch in the class here. Oats and Woes was a pop-up oatmeal thing that started here in class. It was one of the strongest starts I've ever seen. Amazing uh, emotional intelligence of the leader there. Cheese Team was a group that made about $50,000 in that one uh, term, right? Laser toast, they built a toaster that burned uh, images onto toast. Toasting faces on the toast. I told the team of engineers, if you can make me a machine, a toaster in Harbaugh's face that keeps it red, I'll give you an A+. These guys built a whole thing from scratch. And they made Jesus toast, Harbaugh toast, and crab toast. And they totally got an A+. This guy was diagnostic. This guy's going to be a millionaire. This guy came into class. He was working in a lab here on a basic science thing to test blood. But the cartridge didn't have a reader. He used this class and the team in this class to build a reader. And he owns the IP. He's now going to take it public, and it's going to get him at least a couple of million dollars. Right? So that's another really cool company starting here. Awesome. So again, big dreams. Big dreams here the first month. That's fine. I just encourage you to stay focused because it seems like anything's possible here in this first month. But then the next thing you know, you're into February. And like spring break's coming, and midterms are coming and beating you down, right? So you've got to really put in the effort to get organized early, right? What I want you to do, I want you to be cool. Do every shit. What does be cool look like? I need you to respect my time. My time is my precious resource. You guys are young. You got to think about it this way. But time is really important to me. And there's a lot of you, a ton of you. If each student does one thing that costs me two minutes only, that's 600 minutes gone out of my life. That's 10 hours. So, right? so if each of you just does one thing that wastes two minutes of my time, you have destroyed an entire long work day. Right? You see your power? Do, no snowflake feels responsible for the avalanche, right? But just don't be part of it. Are you with me? Please. Right? I got about 50,000 vets counting on me in six different counties around here. I do about 1,000 hours of volunteer work. 
I bill out all my other stuff at about $100 an hour. I got dozens of vets here locally that are depending on me, both for the treatment court and the students here on campus. Then I got my own family, and then I'm traveling all over the place tomorrow, and the week after that. So you're flying all the time, right? So um, here's the thing read the gosh darn syllabus and project guide, right? I can't emphasize this enough. So much of how we're going to function this course, it's a manual. It's a manual for how to crush this class. Read the syllabus, read the syllabus extension, read the project guide. Can you do that for me? Please, it'll make everything so much simpler. Awesome. Do you remember when you were 18 and you looked back on a 14 year old who was telling you how busy they were in, in, as a freshman when you were a senior and you laughed in their face? Do you remember now as a sophomore or a junior here in college, when you go back home and you hear your friend's little sister, who's a senior in high school, talking about how busy and impossible their life is, and you're like, yeah, shut up, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And you look what happens, doubling, doubling, doubling. So this is you guys, right? This is me. <laughs> I'm over here. I'm out of my damn mind over here. I'm trying to do a lot of cool stuff. I just need to understand this is exactly how this goes. It goes to sort of your whole life. So when you're 60, you finally just give up, I guess, and when you retire, you just eat donuts and watch ducks or something. But <laughs> I'm not there yet, right? So just think about this, please, right? Uh, use professional high-functioning moves and communications with me, please. When you send me an email, always say what class you're in and what group number. Every group will have a number. Because if you don't do these things, if you send me an email, I'm not going to do that class on Wednesday. Do that three classes, 400 students. Don't do that to me, right? I don't know what's that. You have to get everyone's class. Right? So always give you name, class number. We'll talk about this. I'll give you some examples of good and bad emails, right? Just ask yourself, what's everything I could do to make it easier for Dr. Hetz? If this is, if I'm asking him for something, let me give him everything he needs to give this to me, so I can make a quick answer, quick decision. And it really shouldn't come to me until it's already gone through the GSI, right? Awesome. So, um, it's good Hall of Shame examples of good documents. The Hall of Shame. Don't blow off meetings. And then here, three then me, right? So, because so one time a student sent me an email asking about something that was in the syllabus, and we talked about it in class, and I sent this email, it kind of implied that she was blind. And, and the GSI said, oh, Dr. Fred, I was just kind of a dick move. And I said, okay, I was cranky, it was two o'clock in the morning, it was, it was, a, it was didn't go too far. I apologize for it. But seriously, right? If you're asking a question, ask your classmate, look at the syllabus, ask your GSI, and if you're coming up with nothing, then you come to me. Good? Three, then you. Much better. All right. Sweet. Grading papers, just sympathy for GSIs. It's just an example, right? You 100 students, five minutes per paper, eight hours. The bottom line is when your GSIs are grading your papers, they don't do it in just one day. It takes a week or more. So just be cool when the GSIs are getting your papers graded. Real quick, freshmen, raise your hands. Sophomores, juniors, seniors. Nice, OK. Uh, everybody, LSA, who's engineers? Where my Rosser's at? Oh, Ross, I love you. I, I jokingly, I, I jokingly call you guys Ross holes. I know, right? I love you though. And we're working. I hear you guys. They finally changed that extra credit thing, so we're not going to have to deal with extra credit for freshmen, I think, right? But the rest of you are still crazy for that 4.4. So we'll talk about that. <laughs> who's, who's declared in the entrepreneurship minor? Oh, hopefully we'll get some higher numbers than that. All right. Prior site courses. Any two or three hundred level site courses? Okay, that's good. Don't worry, we, we cover the psych stuff pretty simply here. Who knows they want to be an entrepreneur, for sure. Nice, okay. What do you need to do? First of all, relax. Two, do the readings, academic design, project guide. That's gonna be in the syllabus. It's gonna come out shortly on Canvas. Get an eye clicker. We're gonna do our first eye clicker test on Monday. You're gonna to wanna to start logging in. It doesn't count right then, but good to have it done by then. Good to have it on hand. Check out the Canvas site. There'll be a quiz for Monday. Just wait for it, it'll show up. Begin thinking about your project idea and group. You don't have to. If you don't have an idea, don't worry. You're going to form a group and you can ideate. Don't panic, but maybe spend a little time thinking about what you might think is a good idea for a project. The project guide will give you some ideas. Go to section on Friday. You must go to your section. If you're here, if you get an override, or you're on a wait list, go, get checked in here. Get, if you're on a wait list, check in here for the GSIs. If you're on Friday, get checked in with the GSIs, because that's how we figure out who's going to get the slots, right? Questions, real quick. Soon. Other questions? <laughs> All right, right on. Yep.